so good evening dear friends welcome back so today our dr harjot kaur she is a doctorate in commerce and management and she is a senior assistant professor presently working in government degree college for women jagatyal she holds several degrees and she is an mcom bed meg mphil M mba pgdca and phd and has qualified national eligibility test conducted by ugc new delhi she is an academician by choice she has put in more than 25 years of academic experience in various capacities as a lecturer assistant professor associate professor professor head of the department and principal of various prestigious private colleges in karimnagar she is selected as guest officer rank to government sector through appsc that is andhra pradesh public service commission in 2011 she got the opportunity to work in colleges affiliated to kakatiya university warangal jawaharlal nehru technological university hyderabad and shatavahana university karimnagar she drafted reports for recognition and affiliation of aicte jntuh and kakatiya university she is a visiting faculty to few management institutions and is a resource person for training programs to model schools and was a reporter and speaker at seminars and webinars in tswe ris management schools and degree colleges she has organized participated and attended various events workshops seminars conferences orientation programs faculty development programs and has published a good number of articles in reputed online journals and print ugc recognized journals magazines and presented papers in various national international seminars and conferences she has two edited books to her credit she authored a textbook on business environment for mgn cre she contributed lessons for study materials for mba of dr b r ambedkar open university and for bcom of sdlc kakatiya university she is an academic counselor for mba of dr b r ambedkar open university for consumer behavior business environment and marketing research she had completed a minor research project sponsored by the ugc she indulges in various activities such as women empowerment career guidance internal quality assurance entrepreneurship development etc she is a subject expert for faculty recruitment in management institutes and telangana minorities social welfare residential junior college she prepares question papers for various universities like telangana university shatavahana university mahatma gandhi university and various autonomous colleges she was the presiding officer for general elections she was the observer for various competitive examinations like msc tgt vro police recruitment etc her main interests are human resources and marketing with an emphasis on branding she is a committed academician and a prolific writer her research area and publications are focused on hr marketing general management she is nac coordinator and as a nac coordinator she created history in getting a grade with a, a cumulative grade point average of 3.12 in 2017 to renowned srr government arts and science college karimnagar which was established in 1956 whose governing body member was the former prime minister of india sri late pv narasimha rao gar and recently from c to b plus plus grade by nac with cgpa 2.78 to government degree college for women jagatyal she is the recipient of state best teacher award on 5th september 2022 on the eve of teachers day from shrimati sabita indra reddy the then education minister of telangana she is the recipient of many district awards she is the academic counselor for mba of dr b r ambedkar open university she gives extension lectures on various subjects in reputed colleges she is the resource person in many national webinars and with this 
brief introduction i hand over the proceedings to dr harjot kaur madam madam thank you thank, thank you ramesh sir that was so nice of you it was not brief but it was an elaborated one uh, thank you very much sir uh, let us not waste a minute and proceed with business economics uh, i request you to please uh, share the slide because there is a technical problem over here uh, and thank you sir for your patience and uh, in sharing my ppt okay thank you madam thank uh, yeah is and it I, and i congratulate both the colleges skbnr and uh, gdc korutla for organizing such a wonderful program for the benefit of all the students in telangana madam is the ppt visible madam yeah yeah sir it's visible thank you madam thank you yeah yeah so dear participants a very good evening to one and all and all the best for your pg entrance examination and uh, we hope we do a squirrel's uh, role in your uh, getting admission into pg coaching uh pg entrance okay so let us not waste a minute a minute and we'll start and today's topic i'll be taking uh, so next slide so i'll be taking introduction and uh, demand analysis madam just a minute just a minute okay and uh, supply analysis okay so you might be familiar with what economics is see dear students remember that see as a commerce student it's our utmost duty you know to understand you know, that the basic thing that there are limited resources and unlimited wants and we have to fill this gap in a systematic way yeah so first we should know what economics is yeah next slide sir yeah it is defined as a social science so nowadays we are calling it as social science which covers the actions of individuals and groups of individuals in the process of producing exchanging and consuming of goods and services to achieve optimization of resource use see remember when we go to shopping also we always try that whatever the money we are spending we get the utmost benefit of whatever the product we are buying isn't it it's a human tendency yeah we know that our income is this much and we have uh, the desire of getting a particular product so we'll see that we get an optimum utilization of uh, our uh, resource that is income in getting that product it isn't, isn't it so that is nothing but economics okay so these are the three things which we take when we learn about business economics one is production decisions yeah what to produce where to produce how to produce when to produce all these things no such questions uh, would be answered when we know about the basic concepts of business economics then comes the exchange decisions so what what i get if i spend this much that would be the decision very important for so if i am investing this what would be my return right so like that exchange if i am buying this what would be the product i am getting whether it is good qualitative and price is reasonable as such exchange decisions are taken and then is consumption decisions yes so how much to consume yeah and um, uh what are uh, yeah uh, what what is the demand of that product you know what is the price of it how the supply is or, or supply of that product is so all these things comes under consumption decisions so for, see when entrance uh, exam is there you know uh, some definitions would be asked so you have to know who has given what kind of definition and all so that is a memorization questions for you so according to lord robins what he said is economics is the science with which you uh, which studies human behavior as a relationship between ends and scarce means which have alternative uses see he he is a person who started about uh, talking about uh, uh, economics and also he said we are bringing a relationship between the ends and the uh, scarce resources yeah and and the means so that we can get the optimum benefit of it uh, by either if you don't get the real one at least we go for the alternative ones so this is the definition given by lord robins okay so likewise you will have uh, some more no like uh, mc nayar has said and mariam has uh, said that business economics consists of the use of economic modes of thought 
okay to analyze business problem so he focused on what business problems are and how to analyze it so he is mc nair and meriam so these you may get one or two questions on the definitions also so one more is uh, joel dean what he said is use of economic analysis okay use of economic analysis in formulating policies we call it as managerial economics okay because see anything you no know, management does is for decision making you no know? plenty of uh, uh, things would be available alternatives available so we have to choose the best out of it isn't it so he has focused on analysis so you remember that when economic analysis is the one word which comes in the definition remember that it is given by joel dean okay likewise we have spencer and siegelman and uh, he said that it is an integration of economic theory okay it is an integration of economic theory with business practice for the purpose of facilitating decision making and forward planning by management so the main features features of business business economics we can say what he said it is decision making and forward planning if these two words are coming in a definition uh, remember that it is by spencer and siegelman okay how the, they are integrating economic theory and business practice okay so that is by spencer and siegelman likewise we have haynes and motte and paul okay what they are saying managerial economics is economics applied in decision making see if simply word economics applied in decision making it is given by paul haynes mode and paul if you remember these so these are few definitions which are given for business economics okay next sir yeah business economics no it uh, some apply see any economic theory or whatever study we do it should be applied no it should be in practice right so this business economics it is use uh, applied okay, uses you can say use of optimum techniques to improve organizational decisions right how to produce what to produce yeah how much labor do i need what would be the cost what would be the revenue and to what extent i can use so that i get the ma maximum benefit if individual firm is thinking right so uh, that is the first use when we know all the business concept and the basic concept especially demand analysis supply analysis uh, cost analysis revenue analysis so as such okay this these things will help us to make decisions second one is understanding individual and market demand decisions to forecast demand yes see when we produce when there is a demand in the market for our product isn't it so if we know how the demand chart is yeah whether it is increasing or decreasing so that we can know so that no we can forecast whether the demand for my good no the the good i am producing is uh, there in the market or not so as such uh, we have to know about business economics then the sec third thing is analyze cost and supply structure to understand supply decisions yeah when we come across supply uh, analysis we will go further de further in detail but we have to know the cost yeah and supply structure so that know what how much should we send in the market right next is we have to understand different markets no perfect market imperfect market how or monopoly is there who is our competitor all these things you have to understand for that business economics is the solution next is understanding external factors like unemployment inflation see you may ask you know how unemployment is related how inflation is related these all are the factors which are associated with business economics because this would be telling whether you no know, people consumers or whether the firms they are ready to produce or not whether they are ready to accommodate uh, unemployed into their factory or not so as such we have to know about these external factors as well next is the characteristics of uh, Uh, business economics next slide yeah next is microeconomics microeconomics no yeah microeconomic nature big business economic 
is microeconomic in its nature because it deals with matters of a particular business firm only. Okay. See, we'll be knowing no in the coming slides also about microeconomics and macroeconomics. Okay, because this business economics is small divided firms. into hello. Used in small firms. Microeconomics. Okay. See. So micro and macro economics. So here we are talking about business economics. It's a feature. One of it is it deals with business firm or individual firm only. And next is we use economic theories relating to you no know, profits, distribution of income, etc. Then this business economics is the normative science. Okay, it, it studies only the matters containing, uh, concerning about you no know, goals of the business, objectives of the business, aims of the business. Okay, now so, so that a method can be adopted, uh, so that you can achieve the desired result. Okay, desired objective. It also makes an inquiry into good and bad in decision making. So what is good and what is bad? That is also would be considered. So it's just a normative science. Next is macroeconomic uses. Next slide, sir. Even though business economics has the nature of microeconomics, it also you know, uses economic approaches uh, frequently uh, to certain matters uh, like business cycles, national income. Sir, next slide, sir. Uh, public finance, foreign trade. So these are the broader concepts. So when it comes to you know, country and all, so how, how the business cycles are, yeah, whether in a boom stage, boom stage or deflation, yeah, all these things uh, that would be deal uh, and dealt. Okay, and national income. Uh, so business economics uses the macroeconomical phenomena also. So business economics, we are, as I said, you micro individual firm and macro total firms together all the firms in a nation they consider it and we are saying that economics is a science as well as an art rami sir are you there change the slide sir okay see why see you should know what is science and what is art science is nothing but no uh like uh uh, what science does, see, we, even when you are in 10th standard, you might have done no, in the lab how the oxygen is <clears throat> produced. Yeah, when you add something no, like uh, uh, potassium permanganate and all, then you uh, heat it, you get some fumes, and that when you um, yeah, just a little matchstick over there, it burns, then it means that is an oxygen. So, what we are doing it, we are just finding a cause and its effect, isn't it? So, even business economics is also a cause okay, okay. Uh, is a science because it's it's uh, finding the relationship between cause and effect okay why why there is a demand for my product because then because your price may be low but quality is good like that okay cause and effect relationship is found so hence it is a science we are calling it as an art also see when i give you some example of art say singing dancing and all these are art when they practice more and more, they get perfection in that particular art, isn't it? Then only they become perfect dancer, perfect singer, isn't it? So even big business economics, when you know about economic theory, when you know about different methods, you know, about analysis, about supply and all, yeah, and then you will be able to use it to maximum extent. So hence, we are calling it as an art. So business economics is, or economics is, science as well as an art. Okay. Then what might be the scope of this business uh, economics, right? See, one is demand forecasting. It's very important for a business firm or, in, or all the firms to know what their demand is and so that they can forecast their demand and uh, accordingly they can produce okay so demand forecasting is one second one is no cost analysis yeah uh, Rame sir when uh, just see the bulletin if I have completed then move to the next slide sir please if you don't mind 
yeah, I have already told about the scope demand forecasting is at most important. And then is next is cost analysis. See, they have to deal with so many different costs incurred uh, by the business firm, isn't it? So every firm they they always try to minimize their cost and always try to increase their output. Okay, uh, especially you no know, uh, by economies of scale. What is economies of scale? See when when you go uh, go to a market to buy 1 kg of tomato it may cost you 10 rupees but when you say that you are, you will take 10 kgs of tomatoes they may reduce the price isn't it uh, to at least uh, 9 rupees or 8 rupees so you are benefited by this so this is called as economies of scale so this this is all you no know, uh, 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 you, you, the scope of business um, uh, economics okay Next is profit analysis. Every business firm, they have to secure maximum benefit, maximum benefits, isn't it? Maximum profits. But at the same time, they have to face risk and some uncertainty would be there. Okay, so you have to calculate that risk also. So economic deals with this profit analysis, like the profit techniques, policies, and break-even analysis, no, no profit, no gain, patient. Yeah, so that they can uh, analyze whether they are a profit, profit genera generating firm or not. Likewise, capital management. This is the scope of business uh, economics. Another one is, so it studies what cost of capital, rate of return, selection of best project. So these things all, you no know, payback, paid back uh, method. So that now when I'm investing this much in how many years I would get the return. So likewise, uh, capital management also would be done. Okay. Next is importance of business economics. See, we, we know that it's very important though. That's the reason that even in PG entrance, they have kept it. So you should know how, how, how important is this subject, right? It studies highly useful for analyzing and, and understanding the various economic problems. Its study brings utility to all sections of people. Okay, business economics become the intellectual religion of the day. Business economics is described as both light giving and fruit bearing science. It, enren in, it enriches our knowledge and brings fruits or results. Okay, uh, see. In, in just uh, one or two sentences, what we can understand is economics is a very beautiful subject, a very uh, important subject, we can say, because, uh, because so as an individual human being also, we should know that there are limited resources, okay, whether it is uh, natural resources or physical resources, but they're limited. You no, know, God has given us limited, but our wants are unlimited. Yeah, with scarce resources, we have to work. So when we can do it, when we know that what might be the demand, what might be the supply, what would be the cost, what would, would be the revenue, what would be my break, break even point, how the profit margin will be, how would I get to return on my capital employed. So as such, if we know these concepts, it is uh, we that uh, if we can shift at least to what, uh, best possible alternative av available for us. Okay, so it, it, th this is how it is very important, business economics. Okay, next is significance of, the, again, the continuation of, say, it is no useful to every stakeholder in the country. Okay, one is to, to the finance minister, to the ministry of uh, planning, to the banker, uh, to trade union leaders, to businessmen, to statesmen and it even to international economic affairs ministry also we can say okay so how how they are useful to a finance minister say he should know what is the public revenue public debt and public expenditure so that you no know, he can frame a very good sound financial policy so in that way it is useful to finance minister it is useful to the Ministry of Planning also, okay, uh, Central Planning Commission. Uh, why? Because they have to know uh, more about, uh, yeah, uh, like uh, uh, how their personal is and working on uh, different types of plans and how the plans are mobilized. 
how would they have to be implemented what might be the capital output ratio investment strategy as such okay now how it is useful to a banker see banker he'll know the nature purpose and implication of different economic policies implemented by the business firms so whether they come for loan to me or to go to a financial institution or how the government is giving subsidies and concessions how they are lowering the interest rates repo rates and also like that when they come to know <clears throat> banker can make their own policy and trade union leaders see they should know because uh, always there would be you no know, some disturbances in the industry whether it is if any industrial dispute is there even if whether any wage problem is there whether then will the firm get closed or will they expand the business so as such union leaders will also be analyzing this right then comes businessmen okay they these people what they do they study the fluctuations in business say when there is a war in some other country they would be no uh, uh, drop in the shares uh, in the sebi and the share market and stock exchanges right so therefore therefore what they do is they just study the fluctuations of business especially the prices production and they see that employment how it is so that they can adopt a proper strategy so so that they can produce goods and services according to no changes in the demand so that's how businessmen use this business business economics next is statesmen all the politicians and all the government officials and all they they study this so that they can understand what the problem is what the economic problem is whether it is inflation or whether it's a decrease in the income or how the rates are increasing you know uh, why the in, in unemployment is there where where the disguised in unemployment is so uh, as such there will be uh knowing this so that they can plan a strategy okay so this is how uh, okay now one more thing left is international economic problems yeah it deals with matters like uh, terms of trade no mu use mo use no memorandum of understanding between one country and another country in dealing with no security problems uh, or defense machinery like likewise okay then balance of payments no and exchange rates how much you know the cost of dollar is and how much yeah sound is not good huh? i'm getting shall i speak little louder okay yes ma'am yeah okay fine uh, so uh, ma'am no, sound raavadam led ma'am i kept it full ma'am madam you use bluetooth oh, ma'am no i have unmuted and kept my laptop sir also at 100 and even this uh, google meets also uh it high pitch only i have kept ma pardon me if uh, yeah shall i continue okay ma'am okay. yeah is it audible now yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah okay fine fine next slide sir yeah these are the two terms every person should know that is micro and macro economics so this is uh, uh, modern economists no uh, divided the subject as micro economics and macro economics these two terms are coined by ragnar frisch first the, in the year 1920 so you may get a question on this who has coined this micro and macro okay so you should be able to say that it's by ragnar frisch and in which year it may be the second question okay it is in 1920 okay now we'll move to micro economics see it is the word derived from greek word micros okay micros means very very small okay the micro economics attention is concentrated on a very small part of individuals okay individuals no 
his uh, his price his income how much is going to spend on what product all these things so you may get one question on who has given the definition for microeconomics okay so you have here i have of ke bolding what he is saying is microeconomics is the study of particular firms particular household individual prices wages incomes individual industry particular commodities so just remember that it micro means small dealing with individuals so when you get a word individual 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 remember that it is microeconomics okay so uh, micro products my micro commodities micro firms okay that's given by ke bolding professor hansen now what he has done is he is saying that it's a branch of economics which is concerned with individual firms their outputs their costs okay uh, the production and the pricing of single commodities wages of individuals etc so when you say that uh, when you get you no know, branch of economics and it deals with so and so output and cost and all so remember that it is given by professor hansen okay then professor macollin macconnell what he said is we examine trees and not the forest see when it is a forest is a macro when you are dealing with trees so you may get this definition this time who has given you just remember that is professor mc connell okay he is saying that we are when we are talking about microeconomics we are talking about only trees and not whole forest okay uh it it is useful in achieving worms eye view of very specific component of our economic system okay see when in a family when we know uh, uh, the personality of each and individual brother sister mother and then we can plan for a whole family way to go uh, have a pleasure trip and uh, all these things no likewise when we are talking about um, Uh, micro no it's it's a worms eye of few specific components of a economic system just individual form okay see here no we can further move that see i in the micro m i c r o micro i in the economy uh, in the word means individual remember that okay it's that part of economic theory which studies the behavior of individual unit of an economy it may be a small firm a small product okay right see it's derived from micros as i told for example individual income individual output these are the example of micro economics see micro economics no what it does is it determines the price of commodities price of factors of production so remember that when we are dealing with micro and individual things it is determining the price of the commodity okay whether Uh, uh the price is rising or demand is falling in what way it is relation so in that way we are determining the price of commodities next is price of fa factors of production so you all might be knowing what are factors of production land labor capital and organization some textbooks they give entrepreneurship your yeah, entrepreneur fourth one or organization right so they try to calculate the price of those factors of production and how it is related to yeah that is there and next is theory of economic welfare so they are dealing with economic welfare also how the people are benefited right uh, by giving them salaries how much per capita income and all these things sorry per capita income sorry macroeconomics so how the salaries can be uh what pension benefits or health benefits or safety measures can be given to them okay that would be dealt with then see when we are talking about price price of commodities we have to know the theory of demand and theory of supply okay that would be dealing in the next slides and then when we are talking about the price of uh, uh, product factors of production we would be talking about production costs and c related with factors of production rent related with the land wages with labor then interest capital and then profits to an entrepreneur or organization so this is how uh, see you just imprint this uh, slide or this structure of microorganism in your 
sorry micro economics uh, in your brain then you can easily answer see if if, if a question comes uh, what 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 is uh, related with the price of commodities then you can say micro economics okay when um, factors of production is there and how you are calculating its price and all you may get the rent wages uh, interest and profits how we are they are related <clears throat> they are related to and to which economics it comes in so micro economics so likewise when you just understand this no you can easily uh, answer those questions and that that is see mcqs means you no know, you have to be very <clears throat> sure about it so when you say price theory it is microeconomics and <clears throat> when you are the uh, factors of production and its price you should know that it is microeconomics where you should know if it is dealing with production cost supply and demand it is microeconomics okay so this is how you should remember next is macroeconomics see the word no macro m a so a stands for aggregate aggregate means total of all the commodities total of all the trees you no know, in the forest so it means whole forest so a a means aggregate it's that part of economic theory which studies the behavior of aggregate of the economy as a whole so we are talking about the whole economy not just individual firm all firms together all individuals together so population right all trees together whole forest so like that so those dealing with the big one the total one we call it as macro economics these macros it's again derived from greek okay and um, it means very large so remember large one for example so you may get national income is it micro economics or macro economics so you should be able to answer that it is macro economics like that aggregate output total aggregate so when you get a word aggregate in case of micro when you get individual remember that price theory means remember that and when when you are talking about macro it is total aggregate okay now see the other name for macro economic is income and employment theory so you may give, get one question right what is income and employment theory it's nothing but macro economics now here we deal with uh, five different theories one is with output and employment so total production total employment theory of trade cycles that is nothing but business cycles yeah uh, one yeah uh, uh, whether it is they are bringing no for more profits or not or are running in loss and all so trade cycles then theory of economic growth yeah whether per capita income of our country is increasing or not so whether gdp is increasing or not that is economic growth then theory of inflation so why prices are rising uh, what might be the cause right theory of inflation theory of distribution also how you no know, it should be distributed then see when we talk about output and employment we should remember consumption function and investment function so you may get a question in mcq investment function the example of dash macro or micro okay so macro just you no know, total aggregate whole investment function we are talking about so hence it is related with macro economics okay next see the major differences between micro and macro economics if you know about these two you will be able to answer any question on this definitely there would be one or two question on this topics okay uh, first when we when i told you that this would be again a repetition just uh, we'll just go through it uh, when we talk about micro it is dealing with individual economic units and macro economics we are dealing with economy as a whole second one what are the tools in micro economics it is demand and supply whereas in macro it is aggregate demand and aggregate supply it's not that demand and supply is not there in macro economics but we are talking about total demand okay yeah when we are talking about micro it may be uh, some for example uh, yeah uh, colgate toothpaste and all right but when we talk about macro economics all you no know, dental industry we can say regarding you know, toothpaste okay 
likewise what is the objective of microeconomics we determine the price okay or factors of production price of factors of production remember that and here we determined income and employment that's why you know it's called in income and the uh, uh, what the in, in income and employment theory okay uh, other name for this uh, microeconomics is price theory so you may get this in mcq what is the other name for microeconomics right price theory and here it is income and employment theory the example as i told you individual income and individual output for micro and national income and national output for macro now what is aggregation here in the case of microeconomics it involves limited degree of aggregation only limited no total of only few uh, one or two firms but whereas here it involves highest degree of aggregation you are taking number of individual firms okay next is yeah when we talk about uh, business economics it is very important because uh, we are going to learn about law of marginal utility law of equity for that you should know what is utility yeah can anybody answer me see you are aspiring for your pg mcom entrance that's your want okay and this oh, gdc Kamam and JDC Korutla, they are giving you this thing, yeah. yeah? Power of good or service, ma'am. Yeah, yes, yes. So they are satisfying your want of getting into your PG entrance examination through these online classes, isn't it? So simple word. It is the want satisfying power of a good or service. So what I gave you the example is of service. Okay, your want is PG. You have to. Uh, come up you know, uh, with a good uh, rank and all in PG entrance, that's your want, want of students here, right? And what these GDC Kodutla and GDC Kamam is doing, they are providing you this service. What? Okay. So utility, the power of, you know, satisfying power, you can say. See, if I'm thirsty, I want water now immediately, that's, that's utility, right? Usually it is referred as satisfaction derived from consumption. Yeah, remember that when when you are consuming something, when see when I am consuming water, I am satisfied that my thirst is fulfilled, right? Yeah, that is satisfaction derived from consumption. Remember, utility is subjective nature. See, for me, if I am getting thir thirsty or I am feeling thirsty, water may be my concern. But for you, it may be Coca-Cola or Pepsi or any other juice or anything. It depends. Or for some people, it may be alcohol or something, isn't it? Right? So uh, remember that it is subject to, it differs from person to person. Utility, uh, no, but uh, yeah, as I told you, it's, it's a subjective and What's it's based on... Whims and fancies. Man? Yeah, yeah, whims and fancies, yes. They, they're, as I told you, no. Coca Cola, that may be a fancy of um, some other person. It may be a whim of some other first person to take alcohol when he gets thirsty. It, it depends. It's, it's a subjective. But early neoclassical economists assume that it can be measured, called cardinal utility analysis. So, but what they say, though it is a subjective, they are saying that we can, we can measure. For example, if I get one glass of water, uh, for my Saturn, you are getting one utils. Okay, utils, that is, we are coming in the next uh, slides. So uh, they said, yeah, we can measure it and they call it under cardinal utility analysis. Walrus called the want satisfying power of goods as utils. So here, Wal Walrus is a person, he, what he is saying that satisfying power of goods we can calculate, we can measure, though it is subjective, and the term no to measure it is. Utils. See, as we have no, when we measure liquids like milk and water, we measure in liters. When we are measuring cloth, we, may, we, we measure in meters. So like that, when we are calculating the satisfying power of a consumer, we are calculating in utils. So remember that thing. Okay. Next is cardinal utility theory. See, what this uh, theory is uh, assuming is... 
uh, that utility we can measure in cardinal. Cardinal means numbers. One, two, three, four, five. These are all cardinal numbers, right? Uh, the consumer is rational. Yeah, he knows what is right and what is wrong. We have to assume when we are talking about cardinal utility. We are assuming that the consumer who is satisfying his want, he is very rational. He knows what is satisfying his want. Uh, and he wants to maximize to a maximum extent. Okay. Citrus paribus. This is one thing which comes in your uh, MCQs also. Uh, yeah, it uh, things you know, which are constant, we call it as citrus paribus. He is saying that consumer, we are calculating his satisfaction of uh, uh, of the want. But you no know, other things are constant. His wants are constant. His tastes are con constant. His income is constant. Yeah, his uh, fashion is, you know, his fashion thinking, you no, know, is constant. All, all the things are uh, constant. If we assume that only, we can prove that cardinal utility theory is there and how it works. Okay, static analysis that is no change in time, even no change in time. Okay, when you are dealing, when you are calculating his satisfaction need. Uh, for today, 10th June at 7, 18 p.m., you're calculating that for that particular period only. Okay. Again, no, next day, it may change. My thinking of my uh, satisfying my thirst may change, right? So that's why cardinal utility theory assumption is that it is uh, you are calculating when there is no change in the time. Next is consumer is independent and they are not influenced by other factors. So consumer is very independent in thinking and he is not influenced by any other factors. Uh, factors like no political influence or economic influence or demographic influence, anything, not that. He is very independent, very rational in thinking. Okay. Next comes total utility. Total utility. The aggregate utility that the consumer gets from the total number of units he consumes. The okay, total number of units he is consuming. Then we call it as, no, it's equal to total utility. At a given point of time, as a consumer increases consumption, his total utility also increases. His total utility is increasing, but marginal utility grad decreases. That we'll come to know later. So remember that as his consumption, one apple consumed, second apple consumed, third apple consumed, fourth apple consumed. So here total utility is increasing. Okay. But this increase at a diminishing rate. See, I am, when I eat the first apple, I feel very happy, maybe 100 utils. Second apple, maybe 90 utils. Third apple, maybe 80 utils. Okay. But they are increasing, but in a diminishing rate. After reaching the level of maximum satisfaction, point of safety, okay, or point of satisfaction, you can call, or uh, uh, to slowly, you no know, total utility starts decreasing. So we'll see in the uh, chart, okay. Then it's a uh, overconsumption. Total utility when we are calculating, you know, it it increases and then it comes to a stop a small point, uh, a satisfying, satisfying uh, point, and then slowly it get decreases. Okay. Yeah. See, next is marginal utility. So marginal utility is the extra or additional satisfaction from consuming an additional unit of a commodity. It's nothing but it's equal to change in total utility divided by the change in quantity of the com commodity consumed. So this is the formula when you want to know marginal utility. So what is it actually? See, it's nothing but it's an additional satisfaction from consuming. So one apple I have consumed, second apple I'm consuming. So I'm getting some satisfaction, right? So additional units are added to it and you're getting some satisfaction okay it may come to an end at a certain point of time but you are getting some additional satisfaction so how you will calculate is when you just know the 
total unit total utility and change in that total utility divided by change in the quantity of the uh, commodity consumed as consumption increases marginal utility decreases so that's called law of diminishing margin marginal utility so as and when you are consuming an extra uh, commodity okay slowly marginal star utility starts decreasing citrus paribas means all the other factors are all the other factors are constant yeah that you have to remember now some important things to remember in for your mcqs <clears throat> uh in in the coming entrance examination see these are the things just i'll read out for you see adam smith is the father of economics so you may get who is the father of economics so adam smith and uh, lionel robbins he has given the definition for scarcity of economics right likewise welfare definition is given by alfred marshall okay and this cardinal utility analysis also is being developed by alfred marshall and i told you know who has given this micro and macro two words for us it's ragnar frisch in which year in 1920 then law of diminishing marginal utility is also given by alfred marshall and a british economist and the law of variable pro proportion we call it as an important law in economic and this is also given by alfred marshall and uh, uh, some of them also supported this benham and uh, samuelson they have given some more information about uh, this things right now after that the next very important topic is consumers equilibrium equilibrium okay see equilibrium equilibrium means a position where there is no change at all Yeah, position of no change. We call it as equilibrium. See, a consumer is said to be in equilibrium when he does not intend to change his level of consumption. That is, when he derives maximum satisfaction. See, I may get maximum satisfaction after eating three apples. Okay, that's my equilibrium. You may get after five eating five apples or five ice creams. Right. okay consumers equilibrium refers to the situation when a consumer is having maximum satisfaction with limited income and has no tendency to change his way of uh, exciting expenditure see a little thing you have to remember that he is getting maximum satisfaction okay what with limited income see i may be having 100 rupees and with that i brought the uh, apples you may be having 1000 rupees and you brought some kgs of apples right so remember here for me consumer equilibrium is different because my income low 100 i'm happy with all this uh, three four apples but yours yours equilibrium may be with thousands depends on income yeah depends on yeah. income yeah and remember that yes his his tendency to uh, spend money also no it doesn't change okay see with 100 rupees i may buy apples i may buy grapes i may buy some other uh, fruit or vegetable and i may get satisfaction but here when we are talking about consumer equilibrium that is no change in the position of satisfaction or satisfying level it means all the other things you know like a uh, tendency to spend this doesn't change right that you have to remember okay so you, a question may come regarding this next is consumers equilibrium in case of a single commodity see the law of diminishing marginal utility is used to explain this equilibrium we'll see in the next slides all assumptions of law of diminishing marginal utility are considered here so some assumptions are there for law of marginal utility that we will deal a consumer is purchasing a single commodity will be at equilibrium when he is buying such a quantity of that commodity which gives him maximum satisfaction say as i told you 100 rupees for me and three apples for me is enough okay so it's a purchasing of a single commodity the number of units to be consumed of the given commodity 
by a by consumers depends on two factors yeah you or me whenever we have some <clears throat> amount in our po pocket we'll just see that what is the price of the commodity yeah when you go to buy ice cream or some groceries or something you first see the price of the commodity and the second one very important one is expected utility from each successive unit right how much utils of satisfaction do i get when i buy these things good in number or little in number or more in number right yeah see equilibrium condition consumer in consumption of single commodity say x will be at equilibrium see this is the formulas you have to remember because questions would be totally on uh, formulas and on graphs okay they may give you a graph but you, you if you remember the graphs no in your brain you will be knowing whether no demand uh, is um, moving towards right or left how it is when the quantity is uh, decreased how the supply would be so when you remember these things because all the next slide would be on based on some figures and graphs so that you can grasp the inner meaning of whatever theory or law we are talking about okay yeah see marginal utility is equal to price of x commodity that, okay then we get a equilibrium so you may get a, the formula for consumers equilibrium is dash then mux x is a commodity okay is equal to pre so remember that when price of that commodity is equal to the marginal utility then it is consumers equilibrium okay now if mu is greater than the price conditions you have to know greater equal and less these three situations increasing or decreasing or equal when you know this you will be able to answer those M mcqs okay see if m mu is greater than price of the uh, price of that particular commodity then consumers is not at equilibrium and he da he goes on buying because benefit is greater than cost okay see ma marginal utility is greater when price okay then the consumers is not at equilibrium he goes on buying because benefit is greater than cost or price is less benefit is more more but he is not at equilibrium he buys more okay when it is less he is again not at equilibrium because he will reduce the consumption because price is high okay daralu ekku unnapudu ayane satisfaction takku avutundi kanuka ayane em chestadu will will try to reduce his consumption okay yeah next sir yeah see you if you know want to know this equilibrium condition you have to know understand this see price of x is i have taken uh, an imaginary example okay see mux that is marginal utility and if i want to know marginal utility of money then i have to divide it by 1 then i'll get maximum uh, uh, marginal utility okay see here when unit of x one i am consuming price is 10 rupees see price i am not changing 10 rupees 10 rupees 10 rupees 10 rupees 10 rupees only right then see marginal utility of x when i am buying unit 1 i am getting 20 utils okay satisfaction level is high then when when i am buying two unit at the same rate 10 rupees i am getting marginal utility of 16 utils when i am buying third unit 10 utils fourth four and fifth zero see slowly decreasing satisfaction level no it is slowly de decreasing 20 16 10 4 and 0 now i want to know marginal utility of money right for that i have to divide it with price okay so for that again i have to know first divide it with one commodity to know marginal utility uh, of money see 20 divided by 1 i am getting 20 16 divided by 1 i am getting 16 10 divided by 1 10 4 divided by 1 4 0 divided by 1 is 0 okay now here see what i have to do 
20 uh, yeah minus price okay see uh, marginal utility of x and marginal utility of money we have to minus it then we'll get price of price is important here so when you are calculating the equilibrium price of that commodity is important see here 20 minus 10 right mux and px here yeah. uh, then i am getting 10 likewise 16 minus 10 6 10 minus 10 see 0 so here i have got three situations as i told you in, uh, previously when we know this figure you can understand see marginal utility of uh, x commodity and marginal utility of money when it is greater than the price of the commodity we are increasing the consumption price takko undi marginal utility ekkuva ga undi ante satisfaction level ekkuva ga undi ante mane em chestamu chaala chaala consume chestamu chaala buy chestamu chaala consume chestamu when it is equal okay it's a consumer equilibrium that is no change in satisfaction level and no change in the price but when it is less price is more satisfaction level is more appu em chestamu buying takku chestamu and we try to consume less so see this is how you have to remember three situations when it is increasing when it is equal when it is decreasing next slide sir see yeah these are the graphs so this you have to imprint in your brain then you can answer any number of questions whether it is law of demand law of supply when you remember though no, that uh, total figure okay uh, example of uh, some table which i have shown you before before slide that and this one then any question you can answer in economics see here on the x-axis i have taken <clears throat> units of commodity Okay, one, two, three, and then apples and kundi, ice cream and kundi, me kuyem and manchi and pista and kundi. Okay, on the x axis I have taken, and on the y axis, what I have taken is marginal utility and price of that commodity. Mana minus chase, minus chase, chase, and other that I have taken on the y axis. Now, see here when the price of, uh, and uh, marginal utility is 20, yeah, then only one unit of uh commodity we have used likewise if my can you see my arrow arrow on this screen i think you can't okay now 16 then it is 2 12 it is 3 8 it is 4 4 it is 5 okay so e vidanga manam draw chase see you may get whether units of commodity and the consumers equilibrium whether it is sloping downwards or upwards you may get that question okay see it is moving downwards the slope is downwards see 20 nundi 5 or kochamukanuka it is sloping downwards so consumer equilibrium in case of a single commodity if mux uh, is equal to p then it is e point see e point right yeah so here marginal utility and price is equal and about that e point is what it is mu is more price is less and the other no at the point uh, uh, down to e it is mux is what less than p price is more your marginal utility utility is less okay so, and here at 5, we got 0. This is called as point of satai, satai t. Okay. So, you may get this question also. What is point of satai t? It is nothing but when the marginal utility is 0. Uh, when plotted on a consumer equilibrium graph. Okay. Now, we'll move to next one. Yeah. This is a very important law. Law of marginal utility. What it is saying, when we consume one or more units of a commodity, the utility derived from E successive unit goes on decreasing. See, I have given you the example of apple. When I am consuming one apple, my satisfaction level is high. Wow, what an apple. It's a great one. Oh, it has come from Kashmir. Wonderful and all. Isn't it? When I take, okay, okay, fine, okay. 
then third one oh then fourth one enough i won't take one more my belly is full right so that means the satisfaction level is going on decreasing so another example i have given of burger because you are all netizens i can say so that's why i have taken this example of burger when you take one burger feels very happy second burger enough is enough i think these days no yeah because all girls want the zero size and all boys a uh, gym body right okay right this is what i mean to say here is when you consume one extra unit then your marginal utility is decreasing yeah and this law is given by a german economist he is h h gossen so this question also may come and law of diminishing marginal utility marginal utility he is his first law so hence the name gossen first law of consumption and we can give other two names also for this law one is fundamental law of satisfaction and fundamental law of psychological law because i told you no consumer is subjective he is rational that's why we call this uh, law as fundamental psychological law fundamental law of satisfaction gossen's first law of consumption ain't it m law of diminishing marginal util utility dmu right so other name ain't it ani gurtu pettukovali when gurtu pettukodam em unnai vi so you have to know then what are the main assumptions when we are dealing with law of diminishing marginal utility very first th thing satisfaction can be measured in quantitative terms 1 2 3 ala one apple two apple one ice cream two app two ice cream right so we can measure the utility the power of satisfaction level we can measure that is what the assumption is second is consumption of reasonable quantity consumption of right quantity of a commodity see here yeah when i told that i am thirsty it's not that when i just drink one spoon of water second spoon of water third spoon of water no because it should be a rightful number no when we when we want water we take either in a glass or in a bottle do you agree so therefore what this law is saying it is saying that it should be of reasonable quantity so when you are taking an ice cream also it should be a reasonable quantity it no it will not be a just a small morsel of ice cream right yeah so it should be in reasonable quantity then only law of diminishing works okay see when i'm taking one apple one apple second apple second apple not that slices first apple full and then second one no slice say so slice one third one slice two fourth one slice four no not like that again you have to take second apple third apple full then only we can uh, tell about law of marginal diminishing marginal utility okay so that's the second assumption third assumption is continuous consumption yeah see i have eaten apple at 4 o'clock and then at 5 o'clock i am eating at 6 o'clock it no not like that it should be one after the other okay on a continuous basis then only we can describe law of diminishing utility okay and fourth one is no change in quantity Uh, so yeah it's a actually it is a quantity and quality also uh, that should remain same okay whatever the from, from one basket you have taken the apples that that should be the same till you explain marginal diminishing uh, diminishing marginal utility okay and fourth one uh, fifth one is he is a rational consumer okay consumer who can measure who can calculate who can compare the utilities of different commodities so he knows yeah i i know how to measure i know how to calculate i know how to compare what the utilities of different commodities when i take apple i know when i take grapes i know how it is when i take no papaya i know when i take pomegranate i know okay so i am a rational consumer then only this law fits 
Six one is independent utilities. All commodities consumed by cons uh, by consumers are independent. Marginal utility of one commodity has no relationship with marginal unit utility of another commodity. See, when I am taking an apple, my marginal utility is different. When I am taking grapes, it is different. Pomegranate, it is different. So for different, that means independent. Each utils of satisfaction of each product is quite different. Okay. Next is fixed income and prices. So remember that when you are describing about the law of diminishing utility, the income of the consumer and the prices of the goods for which you are consuming, they should remain same. They should be fixed. Then perfect knowledge. Consumer knows the different goods on which income can be spent and the utility that, utility that is likely to get out of each consumption. So he, see, consumer has a perfect knowledge of how much he is spending on goods and how he is getting the satisfaction. So when these assumptions are taken, then only law of diminishing marginal utility is, is acceptable or applicable. Okay. So you may get one question, one of the assumptions, and then they say that whether it is for law of diminishing. So you should be able to understand these assumptions. Okay, you can better understand this when I have given you this example, diagrammatic explanation and graphic explanation. When you imprint this, I am telling you that you can answer these questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one is uh, when you are uh, when you one when you are taking one ice cream. Total utility is 20 and marginal utility is 20. Likewise, when you are taking second ice cream, uh, your total utility is 36 and marginal utility is 16. Likewise, going on increasing 3, 4, 5 and 6. Likewise, total utilities, they are increasing. See, see the difference. Total utility is increasing. But whereas marginal utility is decreasing 20, 16, 10, and 4. See, at the point of fifth ice cream, ice cream of 100 uh, uh, ml, you can say, or 50 ml or 25 ml, whatever it is, it should be same from first one. So I think 25 ml ice cream till sixth, it should be 25 ml. Okay. <laughs> So total utilities, it is going on increasing, but see marginal utility. It is slowly decreasing. Then it has come to a point of zero. And then see, it has gone to negatives, minus six. Okay. Yeah, next slide, sir. Yeah, remember this graph. See, I plotted units of ice cream on x-axis and y-axis, I have taken the marginal utility of ice cream our table only this kuna number say we see uh, one unit we are getting 20 second unit 16 13 un uh, three units of ice cream we are getting eight fourth one yeah fourth unit four only marginal utility and fifth we are getting zero uh, that was the kinder of chase in the graph and they sloping down where you may get question yeah, law of marginal utility, diminishing marginal utility, graph plot chase the slope uh, upward untunda, downward untunda, left side move out unda, right side move out unda. It is moving downwards. Okay, slowly downwards, indicating that satisfaction level is decreasing with each successive consumption of ice cream. Okay. Yeah, so same now. Next, very important uh, another law is law of equi marginal utility. See, every consumer wants to get maximum satisfaction out of his or her expenditure on different goods. Yeah, with 100 rupees, you might have brought apple, grapes, and papaya. Okay, but you want to derive maximum satisfaction with all these commodities, isn't it? That is what this uh, equi marginal. You know, you are equally getting satisfaction from different commodities. That is what is law of equi marginal utility. See, according to Professor Marshall, what he is saying, 
in order to get maximum satisfaction a consumer should spend his or her income on different commodities in such a way that the last rupee spent on each commodities yields equal marginal utility okay if i am having 100 rupees and i want to buy different types of fruits so each last rupee so yeah uh, suppose this is 60 this is 20 and this is 20 the no? uh, apples papaya and grapes suppose okay so last rupee i spent on papaya also should give me that equal marginal utility that equal satisfaction though i am buying different commodities with whatever amount i have i'm spending on these three things okay yeah now how we can explain see this is the formula so you may get the formula also in your mcq say marginal utility of x commodity is equal to marginal utility of y if price of product x <coughs> and y is same okay here one more point i have to tell you that the x product apple is costing you 60 rupees kg and grapes is also costing you 60 rupees kg then this law of equimarginal work okay marginal utility works and when you divide this marginal utility of x divided by price of x when it is equal to so in two ways you can define this marginal utility of y when you are dividing it with price of y then it is uh, if price of products x and y is not equal you see remember price same unnapudu equal ga unda choose quality direct ga Kani equal lane up to prices different down the 60 rupees kg only the 50 rupees kg unan alant up to ratio this quality and it divide chiali and the marginal utility divided by price okay up to make a law of equity marginal utility the list only okay next these are the assumptions see prati logic on the assumptions on tie direct the fit cow man i'm assume chase quality supposition chase quality suppose chase quality up to fit out on the okay one is cardinal approach is there that means we can measure utility see law of diminishing it's given by alfred marshall and so utils are measured so here also the same assumption is there second one as i'm i told you consumer is rational no change in income no change in mar marginal utility of income no change in taste and same citrus paribus okay no change in taste and preference no change in prices of goods and related goods see again related goods are again substitute goods and comparative goods uh, yeah okay uh, that we will we'll come to know so this is the example see total income is 5 rupees only so no change in income and nanga that you law chip it up so uh, you may get a question law of equi equi marginal utility whether income is high low or equal or negative question ravachu so remember that income here is always taken as same see five 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 only so total income of is five and price of commodity of both is same so first one i am taking is same price second price under Name Japanu ratios the Alanano. Panikadan same price the example Chiptinano. So price of commodity of both is same. We are assuming it as one rupee per kg. Mami Baragade. Pardon? No, no, please carry on, madam. Yeah, okay. See, money spent one rupee two. See, income five rupees and then can five rupees varaki this kunan nikra one rupee two rupee three rupee four rupee and five rupee so marginal utility of commodity a it can be apple okay uh, or and the commodity of b it may you may assume anything okay papaya or anything whatever it is so here marginal utility always decreasing no so 12 10 8 6 and 4 ikra money spent on commodity b see already when i have used money i have spent one here then here one rupee i have taken 10 uh, marginal utility of me is 10 when i have taken two so already i have spent two rupees here three rupees has gone only i have to use two rupees more isn't it 
my income is five. So second, if I want to buy, I'll be spending two rupees on that. I'm getting marginal utility of eight here. Likewise, when I'm taking three here, already I have spent three and already I have let me two. And uh, to, otherwise, I have to take I only uh, immediately I have to spend five rupees and my marginal utility is becoming six. So where my marginal utility is same here when I'm spending two rupees for commodity two and three rupees for commodity A. See, eight and eight, I have circled it with black, isn't it? Right. So money spent here is three and four rupees. So here, see, remember, marginal utility of A is equal to marginal of utility B. That is at e, eight, eight, uh, eight marginal utility, eight utils. So consumer bu will buy what? Three units of A and only two units of B. At that time, he is getting a break, break even, we can say. Okay. Marginal utility, that satisfaction level. Okay. To get maximum satisfaction, how he is spending his five rupees on two commodities. Okay. At, when he buys commodity of A, three, and the other commodity, two, then he is getting maximum satisfaction. Okay. See, now when the prices are different, we have to find the ratio here. Right. See. Here, total income I have taken as 75 rupees. In the case, in the first case, it was 5 rupees income. Now, here it is 75 rupees. And price of commodity are different. We are assuming that commodity A is for 10 rupees and commodity B is for 5 rupees. So, here, see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, like uh, marginal commodity of A, 190, 80, 70, I'm getting. See here, marginal utility divided by price. 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10. Okay. 90 divided by 10 is 9. 80 divided by 10 is 8. 70 divided by 10 is 7. 60 divided by 10 is 6. Likewise, we have to calculate. Here, I'm calculating ratios when prices are different. So, you may get the question. Okay. When the prices are different, how the law of equi marginal utility fits then you can explain this here see here for the commodity b i have taken 5 rupees so 35 divided by 5 is 7 30 divided by 5 is 6 so likewise other marginal utility of commodity b is uh, computed here calculated here okay next we look the we look into the graph so please graph okay uh, see three cases uh, same thing I have put it in uh, uh, one uh, table here on the left side. See quantity 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and uh, ratio of A and ratio of B is taken of marginal, marginal utility and price 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. See here we are getting three cases. One case is when marginal utility of A is divided by marginal uh, price of uh, A is equal to that is 7 and 7. See here, when 4 unit of A is equal to 1 unit of B, I am getting this case. Okay. Second case is when 5 units of A and 2 units of B. Third case is when <coughs> uh, five, uh, 6 units of A and 3 units of B. Okay. Now, see, when we are taking a ratio, when the prices are different, consumer will uh, get 6 units of A and 3 units of B to get maximum utility. That means, see, this um, consumer, when he is getting, when he is consuming 6 units of A and 3 units of B, he think, maximum satisfaction maximum utility utility through from uh, through his income of 75 rupees this is law of equi marginal utility so we can call this as consumer equilibrium in case of two or more commodities other names for these are law of maximum satisfaction law of indifference law of substitution and another name is second law of H. H. Gosen because he has given this law. Okay. Yeah. 
we'll move further sir or uh, <clears throat> this is all about demand analysis sir till now here introduction and different basic concepts have been taken law of important questions evaithe ayostayo introduction lo these are all been dealt okay law of diminishing utility law of equimaginality utility scope of business economics the different definitions of it all these things are taken sir ramesh sir shall we proceed or uh... okay madam we will break huh? we will continue tomorrow oh uh, okay sir okay then okay uh, yeah yeah thank you thank you yeah. all if you have any queries uh, i'll take up tomorrow okay thank you madam thank yeah. you thanks very uh, much sir thank you sir thank you madam thank you sir